thank you very much. Um, so I would like to uh, say praise uh, the organizer, well done for, for this uh, very interesting webinar and initiative in Indonesia. Um, so I have a, a question. This is related also to uh, the presentation of uh, Dr. Martha as well as uh, uh, Ibu Ani from uh, Sumber Mulyo. I would like to know more uh, in, in, in the sub-village uh, isolation uh, shelter or, or isolation center. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you accommodate um, uh, people who are being tested and waiting for the results, as well as uh, people who are, uh, need uh, quarantine. Um, the, I would like to know more uh, whether you segregate them in, in different rooms, uh, because as we know, uh, people who are waiting for, for the, their test results uh, there is a possibility of positive results as well as negative results. So if we are mixing them together and then in the end, we uh, send the negative uh, results uh, people to their community, then uh, it, we are just creating a new breeding ground. Uh, so uh, that is my question. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Maybe uh, Ibu Ani can start and then followed by Martha. Thank you. Langsung. Uh, yeah. Terima kasih pertanyaannya bahwa untuk yang shelter perduguan, warga kami yang kita karantina di shelter perduguan, kita pisahkan masing-masing kamar. Per kamar, per individu. Satu kamar, satu individu. Karena kita tidak tahu apakah mereka nanti hasilnya positif atau hasilnya negatif. Sehingga antisipasinya adalah satu kamar, satu individu. Berbeda dengan yang shelter desa. Kalau yang shelter desa, shelter tingkat desa itu satu kamar beberapa individu. Karena jelas yang shelter desa itu sudah untuk pasien yang benar-benar positif. Demikian jawaban kami. Oke, okay, terima kasih Bu Ani. Martha, would you like to weigh in? Yes, no, I think that uh, that is a great uh, topic and a great question because we have been very worried of the cross-infection within uh, isolation units and mainly when it's for quarantining people that are just contacts or uh, that they are just like coming to a health facility with any of these in a specific signs of COVID that could be fever but because we need to remember that we have a lot of endemic diseases and other diseases that can cause fever or cough or respiratory distress, et cetera. So it's extremely important that whenever we are isolating or quarantining people who don't have a confirmation yet, we need to make sure that we keep the space between them and preferably individual rooms with their individual toilet, just to make sure that we don't end up having secondary infections because of this epidemic, no? So in the way that we are designing these community centers, we need to always remember the cross-infection, no? the IPC measures to make sure that we don't cause more harm than, than, than the disease itself. So it's in, in the presentation that I was making and when, when we review the, the slide, you will see that the recommendation is that the areas for quarantining contacts or for isolating suspected cases, the recommendation should be individual rooms or at least like a very high space with a very good ventilation system that you can have like even natural ventilation, but making sure that you have a flow. So then patients cannot get infected with their, with their neighbors. Thank you. All right, thank you, Martha. Uh, maybe, um... Other participants would like to add on that. Uh, partisi, uh, Bapak Ibu yang lain mungkin ingin menambahkan. Dan Pak Agus atau Ibu Ani, Ibu Sri Amina atau Pak Rimawan mungkin ada yang ingin ditambahkan. Okay. All right then. Um, okay, so just uh, again to remind everyone, you may raise your questions either to uh, click on the raise hand button or uh, put your questions in the Q&A box uh, so I can call up your names and then you can ask directly to all the, um, uh, to all the, uh, to all the panelists, sorry. 
All right then, so I think moving on um, to our next question, I think I will just uh, want it, I think I will just read it, the questions though. Um, I think no one raised their hand, but someone put the, the questions on the Q&A, but I think I will uh, raise uh, this question. So I think it's regarding to the post uh, eight feeder holiday uh, session that, well, we're currently in still the Eid Mubarak or Eid Fitr holiday in Indonesia. But then after this, people are kind of, well, I know there's some um, uh, regulations by the government that there are, uh, I mean, people are not allowed to go back to their hometown, but we know that there are several cases that it's not really effective. So, um, well, especially in this case, uh, and considering in other in other countries, similar events did take place, and it caused what is called as the tsunami of COVID nineteen cases. So, um, in the case of Bantu Regency, what is the prevention that is currently implement being implemented, or that is currently uh, planned by the uh, by the Bantu Regency, uh, or by the Sumber Murio Village, for example, to uh, kind of uh, prevent uh, this upcoming, I don't know, an increased number of COVID-19 cases. And also for Martha, uh, considering that this case is not the first time happen in in, uh, in one country, well, Indonesia, I don't know what's, go what's gonna happen, but similar case happened in India when they also celebrated their uh, religious event. And I think that's what we are, Indonesia is currently expecting in the next few weeks. Although uh, we are praying that it's not going to be as worse as what happened in other countries. So I think that's the questions. I would like to address these questions maybe to Pak Rimawan first, maybe? Yeah, okay, uh, thank you. So basically this is the, uh, this is our concern, basically, in Sonjo. When um, uh, I think when the, the third day uh, the case is was spike uh, surge in in India, and then every night, basically, I, I, I try to uh, check, you know, the, the the progress, the updates from the CNN and also the uh, BBC at that time. And I was thinking, well, I think we need to we need to 